All right, in question seven, we're going to return to the radial vector field where we take the position vector r and divide it by a uh, power of its magnitude. And here, we're going to compute the curl of this uh, vector field. So I've gone ahead and set up the uh, curl determinant here. And, and when I divide this position vector by r to the p, uh, the components are going to be x over r to the p, y over r to the p, and z over r to the p. So let's go ahead and differentiate. Now, uh, it's helpful to write these expressions as x times r to the negative p, y times r to the negative p, and z times r to the negative p. And when we differentiate, go ahead and uh, use these facts again uh, as we did when we computed the divergence of this field. All right, so here we go. It's kind of a mess, but uh, fortunately it simplifies uh, a ton. So for the i component, Right, we're deleting out column one and row one, so we're going to take the uh, determinant of this two by two matrix. So we're going to take the y derivative of the quantity z times r to the negative p. Okay, so taking the y derivative, z is constant, so I'm really just taking here the y derivative of r to the negative p, and then I'm just going to multiply by z. So I'm going to get minus p times r to the minus p minus one, so that's just the power rule, and then the chain rule will give me this. Uh, uh, y derivative of r, which is just y over r, and there's that z, which is uh, constant with respect to that derivative, and that's just hanging out uh, right here. Okay. See now for the for the other term in the determinant, right? We're going to subtract what the z derivative of y times r to the negative p, and so we get negative p times r to the negative p minus one times the uh, z derivative of r, that's from the chain rule, so we get a z over r, and then we have that y, which is constant with respect to this uh, z derivative, so we get this expression, and notice these two expressions are in fact the same, right, just swap the y and z here to get this, okay, and likewise for these other two components, right, these two quantities are the same, and these two quantities are the same. Okay, so when all is said and done, each component is in fact just equal to zero. Okay, so the curl of this radial field here is zero. Okay, so real quick here, I want to summarize what we've found in total about this radial field. So in question five, we computed its divergence and we found that that was three minus p divided by r to the p, and the curl, as we just computed in this problem, is equal to the zero vector. And in particular, when p is three, okay, we now know that uh, this vector field, which remember, satisfies the inverse square law, right? So in other words, uh, this is the sort of the special radial field out of this out of this list of radial fields because of the list of forces that satisfy that inverse square law. And we know that now, right, it has a divergence is zero. So in other words, it's source free and its curl is zero. So it's irrotational. And that's true on its domain, which is all of R3 excluding the origin. Okay. Now in problem seven, it does say explain your answer as to why the curl of this radial field is zero. Well, for that, it's pretty similar to what we said for uh, the uh, radial field uh, in in two dimensions. Okay, so if I look at maybe well, if I look at say the case when p is one here. Okay, now the curl is measuring the rotational effect that's going to be generated uh, by this uh, vector field. So if I imagine this little ball sitting in some fluid, now these vectors say over here that are pointing radially outward, they're going to want to create some kind of, uh, say, rotation, maybe, you know, if I'm looking down on the ball in a counterclockwise fashion, but see, then you're going to get equal uh, pushes over here, right? And just by the symmetry, this uh, radial symmetry from our, our vector field, basically all of those tendencies are just going to cancel out, and there's going to be a net rotational tendency of zero. And that will be the case no matter where we are in in space, well, excluding the origin where we have domain issues, but um, that certainly does make sense as to why the curl for this field would be zero. All right, great. Well, we're going to stop there, 
and I'll see you in question eight next. Thanks.